So the next thing I want to tell you about uh, as it relates to the scientific method and setting up an experiment are the types of variables. Uh, there are several types of variables in any experiment. The idea is that as you're setting up an experiment, you want to make a plan for what you are going to adjust and where you expect to see a change or maybe where you don't expect to see a change in something else. So if I adjust this, what will happen to this? And along the way, there are also many other things that you're keeping the same and not adjusting or expecting or hoping to see a change in. So to talk about each of those little different types of variables, variables essentially, is the next topic here. First, the first kind of variable is called the independent variable. Now, you might assume then that there's also a dependent variable, which is true, and that's the next one. The trick is with these that they're often misunderstood slightly or uh, misinterpreted. An independent variable, the word independent might make you think that it's not uh, based on anything else. It's free to do what it wants. I'm free. I've got independence. It's not what, quite what the word independent is meant to mean here. Uh, the idea is that you adjust an independent variable in your experiment. You are controlling something. You're adjusting the temperature. You're adjusting the time. You're adjusting the height, whatever it might be, depending on the experiment. And as a result of that, other things are changing. Or maybe we'll find out they don't. But other things may change. So this thing that you're controlling, this independent variable, affects the other things, not the other way around. Okay? So that's why it's independent. It's not based on the other things. These are based on it. So it is independent, and they depend on it. So the independent variable will be the thing that you, as the experimenter, are controlling or adjusting. You should only have one of these. And the big reason for that is that in an experiment, if you have more than one independent variable, there's going to be a lot of things changing, and you may not know which of these dependent variables is changing based on which of these independent variables. Like what was my cause over here that resulted in this effect? You don't want to have multiple independent variables at once because it's basically impossible to draw any kind of a conclusion, which is hopefully the point. And so you should only have one. Let's say I'm building ramps for my radio control car uh, to see how the car jumps off of each one. And so uh, what might the independent variables be? What kind of things could I control or adjust in order to make the experiment give me some sort of result? I might adjust the length of a ramp. Maybe I'll make uh, ramps that are 20, 30, 40 centimeters long. I could adjust the height of the ramp. So as it's coming off at the end, is it you know, 5, 10, 15 centimeters tall? How high is it? Uh, I could adjust the materials of the ramp. I could make ramps out of wood, plastic, cardboard, who knows, all kinds of different materials. I could also adjust maybe the angle simply of the ramp uh, and measure that if I'm getting into a little more geometry. That's kind of like height and, and length, um, but maybe you want to do it as an angle thing and, and make it a little bit more complicated. Or if you're in physics and you're trying to find how a projectile flies best, you might base it on the angle of the ramp or the uh, launch of a projectile rather than any kind of a distance. And so as we're looking at independent variables, there are lots of good choices. But each of those could be adjusted and then result in a difference somewhere else. That somewhere else is our dependent variable. A dependent variable is what's changing as a result of what you were adjusting, the independent. There may be more than one of these in an experiment. You may collect data <coughs> or results on more than one dependent variable. In the end, you may draw conclusions about more than one dependent variable as well or you may just sort of focus your attention on one of the dependent variables. Always better, as I mentioned in the last video, to collect more data than you think you'll need because later you might look at it and say, wow guys, if we look at this, we actually have a whole different relationship here. And you might draw a conclusion that you would have missed. So it's probably better to collect a lot more data, even if it means having two, three, four dependent variables. And then later on, maybe you can help, it, help to uh, figure out what was really going on because you collected extra data. For our race car experiment, what kind of dependent variables might we collect? Well, we might collect uh, information on distance traveled. How far does the, the, the uh, race car fly in centimeters? Uh, how how uh, high does the race car fly? As it's going through the air, it's going to have an arch. What's the, what's the maximum height that that race car flew? That might be tricky to measure unless you have a, you know, a high-speed camera or something and then go in there and measure on a computer or have a grid behind your, your car as it's flying that you can kind of read it on. So you have to set up a way in your plan, and that's why you set up a good experiment in advance. You might, you might also time how, how long the car is in flight. That'd be tricky too, uh, maybe unless you had a good video or a really fast thumb on your, on your stopwatch. So time that's aloft, how far it flew, how high it flew. You might measure something completely different. Maybe you have a, a pit of sand or fl a flower that your, your car is landing in, and as it lands, it makes an impact crater, and you're going to uh, measure how wide the impact crater is, or you can measure how much sand is splashed out of it or something, and uh, draw your conclusions about that. 
it's got connections here for everything from automotive engineering to X Games to uh, maybe even putting a, a spacecraft on Mars and how landing it or uh, comparing uh, you know, meteorite impacts to how a, a spacecraft might land on Mars. All kinds of information that we can draw. So we're going to choose an independent and a dependent variable and then continue on from there. Finally, control variables. These, there can be many of these in a, in a given experiment. You want to make a control variable be the things that you're not adjusting during the experiment. You're keeping these the same. So you'll often hear these called constants. Constants are a little different. Uh, constants are a mathematical value that doesn't change in your math usually. A control variable is a factor that you maybe could have changed but didn't, chose not to change, chose to kept, keep the same. So let's say that in my experiment I'm setting out my independent variable as the height of the ramp. So we're going to test ramps of different heights. And I'm, I'm testing my dependent variable as the distance that the car travels through the air as it flies. So my independent is height, my dependent is distance traveled, or distance that the car flies. What kind of control variables might I have? Uh, well, if all the other things aren't changing, then the length of the ramp would be kept the same. That would be a control. Uh, the ramp's material is going to be a control. Maybe we're going to test every time on the same piece of wood as my ramp, or the same sheet of plastic. We're going to keep the ramp's width as the same all the time. Or if we're using the same page, that would, or this area of the same piece of wood, then that would stay the same. Maybe it's 10 centimeters wide, something like that. Uh, the speed of the car as it, as it comes up onto the ramp. Very important that you keep that the same, because if your car is not going the same speed all the time, then that's going to be a big factor, another independent variable. And you're going to be very confused as to what causes what. And there are lots and lots of others as, a, as control variables go in almost any experiment. In fact, as you think about it more and more often, you'll, you'll realize that there were maybe a dozen or more uh, control variables that you just forgot to mention. That's it for now on variables, and uh, we'll talk to you again about uh, making observations and then drawing interpretations about those as we go into our next video. See you then.